Peter, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return. Thank you. It's really good to see everybody back here. What would you say are the key things the industry has learned in the last 18 months and is now going forward with and using going forward? To um, digitize faster and save time and money from traveling too much. <laughs> and what would you say are the key actions that are being taken behind that? So digitization is obviously a key theme that we're hearing lots about at this conference. Well, I think, you know, we've all installed Zoom if we didn't have it, plus another uh, two or three software programs. But I think the key actions is just thinking about how can we be more effective by using technology and saving the environment. Indeed, because many say that technology is actually the answer to a lot of the sort of societal issues that we're seeing. What would you say about that and the role that private equity could perhaps play in that? Well, from our perspective, we're using enabling services and interaction among customers and ourselves through the use of technology. Uh, using data, of course, to, we talk about artificial intelligence, but it's really machine learning by using data to predict outcomes. And do you think you're seeing uh, very sort of specific uh, sector specialization because of that as well? Firms are picking their horse to back, if you like. I think that a lot of the technology actually applies across sectors more horizontally. And we use the technology learning, for example, in services into healthcare or from healthcare into industrial products or consumer goods. So for us, it's, a lot of it is, is horizontal, while of course in each niche, you then have to be specific in how you apply it. And what sort of teams do you need to be able to do that? Who are you looking for in terms of talent at the moment? Yes, well, first of all, I think you need to have a leader who is willing to listen and willing to recognize that other people know a lot more than I do about a lot of things and who's willing to build teams that unite expertise, not only digital expertise, but also consumer thinking, societal thinking, ESG thinking. So a lot of it is about leading with an open mindset. And presumably teams that are diverse and that offer that cognitive diversity to be able to look at all those areas too. Yes, of course. So that's sort of the prerequisite of a team that's open-minded is a diverse team because you come with different ideas and different perspectives. When we're seeing a market that's as, where the valuations are high, as high as they are at the moment, what would you say are the safeguards that you put in place and, and what does this industry need to bear in mind going forward in that sort of environment? That's a very good question. And uh, I think we, like others, think about it in a lot of ways. And there are many ways to think about it. Uh, from our perspective, we think about valuation today versus in five to 10 years. And it's really that line that matters and not so much what you pay today, but what you think it's going to be worth in five or 10 years. And what have you done to that business uh, together with the people that work in there to make it worth more than it was worth today? And so do you see that as something where companies can sort of start to look and see what their responsibilities are to those companies as well and is that relationship changing do you think you're seeing because of potentially the pandemic and how that's highlighted yes. some of the societal issues yes. do you think that the private equity world are seeing their responsibilities differently to those companies too but that's a very good question we uh, and i say we from triton but i think many of us who come from uh, here in germany or perhaps in, in the nordic region We've always thought about stakeholder value creation. And as such, we as owners at Triton, we need to have a margin of safety. We try not to leverage our companies too much. We ensure we have more money to put in if it's needed. And we try to very much to leave um, every business we partner with in a better shape when we pass it on. So every room you go into, you need to be willing and prepared to fix it and make it better. How much do you genuinely see other companies having that attitude now? Because obviously, reputationally, private equity hasn't always been viewed brilliantly by the general public, say. Is that changing? I think that the, the private equity industry has definitely eaten its medicine on this, and probably, I would say, 10 years ago. 
And, and almost all the people you meet in private equity today think that way. Uh, of course, we also make mistakes and accidents happen that may not be due to private equity. So yes, we will have some investments that fail and then it's important that we act particularly responsibly then. And I think that's also what our investors expect from us. And today I would argue they're even willing to pay a little bit for that. So that returns, returns, returns matter, but it's also important to them that we're responsible owners. How useful is it with all of that in mind to have an event like this where you can have perhaps those conversations in a more collaborative approach with colleagues? I think it's very useful and we, we as an industry, I think are able to share uh, what we learn and, and, and doing that. In a way, we're proud of the good things we do and if we make a mistake, we try to speak to others and learn from that. And it, there is, I don't get the impression that we're all kind of fighting or competing with each other. We're rather in one industry as a whole and trying to make it better. And an event like this allows you to do that. Yes, it's important to do that. It's been so lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter. Thank you.